some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. You know it's been a while since I've uh, covered Riot Girl Radio, Rage Girl Radio, Honey Boo Boo, or whatever you want to call her, but it seems like it's been a year. In fact, it has been about a year since I haven't covered her, and in that time, she's been fighting trespassing charges and everything like that over what she uh, claimed to be a First Amendment protected activity at a pen dot station last year and now she is blaming everybody but herself for her own actions and continues to misunderstand the law and everything else yeah just like a typical frauditor and well even sean paul reyes couldn't save her from this so without further ado let's go ahead and get this freaking s show on the road shall we and um it's taken a year for me to get to this point, to get to the hearing. And um, over this whole year, it's been them continuing and moving us from one place to another. And um, so I told you guys I would go live um, after court. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I look like shit because first of all, I was eating ice cream and my favorite kind is peanut butter cup. Um, I don't know if it was expired or what, but like it was frozen and I bit on it and it cracked my eye tooth. Well now, here are two traits of uh, frauding right here. The first one is, well, blaming everybody but yourself. Yeah, in this particular occasion, it is not exactly the fault of the ice cream for uh, fracturing your tooth, which is the other uh, common thread that frauditors have is poor dental hygiene, which in your case, the fault lies within yourself for not taking care of your choppers. Now, I don't want to see any of uh, you frauditors have any poor health due to something you've done to yourself, like uh, Georgia Transparency and his uh, possible heart condition. I mean, just gotta listen to him breathe and you'll uh, be concerned about him. But you really need to take care of your teeth, otherwise you will have well, health conditions later on that uh, are related to your oral health. Um, so yeah, I went to court today and I wanted to tell you guys about it because I think that's really important. Eventually. From the time I got into the courtroom, I could tell that everyone was biased against me, the entire courtroom. Like every a police officer in that room, um, every person working for the court, um, the judge, um, just everybody, except for like this one chick in there that was, she wasn't like the clerk of course, but just the chick that like goes around and makes sure everything's moving smoothly and the judge is getting everything she needs. But, um, so yeah, I have been charged with disorderly conduct and trespassing, even though I was never asked to leave PennDOT, but, um, so... I was getting, I was put on stand by my lawyer and I was asked questions and when I would answer them, the judge would fight for the prosecutor's side. You know, honey boo boo, I'm not exactly going to call you a liar, but I guess I will because in your other videos you have lied so often. Uh, are you sure that's what you saw that the judge was on the side of the prosecution the whole time? Or was he just trying to uh, arbitrate the whole situation as efficiently as he could and it just so happened that your lawyer was not exactly making good points because you probably hired a rather shitty lawyer? The judge was like telling them things to say and questioning me herself. See, I lost a jury trial and I think that's where this whole thing got totally up. Because if I had a jury trial, the judge, the people, the bias in the court could have never happened. And the jury and people don't like to see a judge siding with the prosecutor from second one. You know, like I said before, I really doubt your claims. I mean, if a 
your lawyer had actually been there on the ball and everything like that, then they might have been able to stop this kind of thing. But the question is, did this really happen, or is this a story that you made up just to uh, blame other people for your stupidity? Auditors are trying really hard. Well, I was. I was trying really hard to make a difference. Oh, so you think that First Amendment auditors are making a good change for society, huh? Whoa, let's take a look at Denver Metro Audits, for example. He definitely made a change. In fact, it really didn't uh, work out and in the way that you frauditors thought it would, considering that there is now case law that pretty much states that what you're doing is wrong. There's Long Island Audit, who is currently in a dispute with uh, Mark Stout, and what happened with uh, him in New York City as well, when that completely fell apart. And there are plenty more examples of where that came from, that uh, your side is affecting negative change on the world that is starting to restrict the rights of everybody else. So, yeah, you've done more damage to the world than you could possibly, well, uh, comprehend. Your side, anyway. And, um, it did absolutely nothing except my life. You want sympathy? You're not exactly gonna find it with me. You're the one who calls this all by yourself. By your own actions and by your own stupidity. Congratulations, you're a moron. You'll get no sympathy from me! You want sympathy? Look at the dictionary between shit and syphilis! That's where you'll find my sympathy! Um... I wouldn't tell anyone to start auditing because all of us, including me, I, I said it when I was auditing in my videos and a lot of other people say it too. Just pick up your camera. Just pick up your cell phone and turn on your camera and start filming. No. That's not what you should do because that's what I did. And now I have six months probation and I have two criminal charges of trespassing and disorderly conduct. When you guys have seen the video and I did neither of those two things. Hey, dumbass. They shut down the pin dot station because of you. And then when the officers arrived, you refused to leave. So therefore... You are absolutely wrong. I'm going to leave a link to, to the video in the description below, and that way everybody can see for themselves how stupid you were to begin with. When I'm on stand, I mean, we watched my whole video, and I thought the judge would see how horribly I was treated by the police, by Pennsylvania State Police. And that's when it, like, sunk in that, like, I live in one of the most up states commonwealths um that don't give a shit about rights and don't give a shit about the constitution and it makes me feel powerless and helpless and angry i feel very angry but most of all i guess i feel like heartbroken because i never did it for views and likes like yeah all that was great of course it's great any human is gonna love a million views and a million subs and a million likes. Of course, that's going to be awesome. But that's not why I did it. It never was. And I hope you guys could see that and know that. Oh, why don't you go ahead and cry all those little crocodile tears? Oh, come on now. You were not mistreated by the officers. They were simply doing their jobs and removing somebody from the building that was causing trouble by the request of those who were operating the big building to begin with, you Dits. So do me a favor, why don't you go ahead and cry some more tears and build a bridge over that river you created. And I feel like shit, man, because I went through everything I went through and nobody gave a shit. The judge didn't care. The judge didn't care about the Constitution. She told me that me filming in Panda is not a constitutionally protected activity. She told me that, um... I don't have rights to just do whatever I want, even though I explained to her over and over that, like, I only go, you know, I don't go in restricted areas, I'm just in lobbies, corridors, entrances, you know, I'm freedom of press, according to the Pennsylvania Constitution, according to Article 1, Section 7, we have freedom of press rights, uh, the Pennsylvania Constitution was the first one 
Yes, we do have freedom of the press in this country. But you know what freedom of the press is? Freedom of the press isn't what you think it is, uh, you loony. Uh, freedom of the press is not the gateway to be wherever you want, to do whatever you want, as you frauditors like to think. Freedom of the press simply means the ability to uh, publish your stories without government interference. You publish this uh, video on YouTube without government interference. Had there been government interference, we would have never seen this video to begin with. So, what rights were violated? And what story was there? Because all I saw was a, uh idiot trying to throw her weight around in a, a DMV and end up getting arrested after they shut the place down because of your damn stupidity. That was uh, made before the federal constitution. And that shit should matter. And when I explained that to the judge, that this is freedom of press, that this matters, that any citizen should be allowed to gather content for a story, should be able to see where their taxes go, should be able to look into any government building that our taxes paid for. Why wouldn't we have that right? Well, I understand today. In the middle of the court case, it's, um, I think it was right before we broke before lunch, around like one o'clock, and all of a sudden she says, do we know where her camera is? And I'm like, um, it's in my purse. And she's like, I want to see it. I want to make sure it's off right now. And I'm like, okay. And then she said, who was that sitting with you? And I said, that's my boyfriend. And she said, well, I want to see his phone too. Wait a second. You said boyfriend, right? You know, the last time I saw one of your videos, you were talking about your fiance. Uh, did your uh, previous uh, fiance up and leave you because of your stupidity and everything like that? And then you got yourself a uh, new guy, one who was a bit dumber than the previous one. Is that what happened? And he was about to say that you're f***ing not. Like, you have no authority over me. I broke no law. I'm sitting here as uh, support for this person that you're berating and calling. The judge called me mentally ill. If shoe fits, wear it. And that my little audit doesn't do shit. It's not news gathering. That uh, being inside PennDOT and uh, uh, videotape, uh, filming, recording is not constitutionally protected activity. It's not part of the Constitution. It's not part of our rights. We have no right to do it. Um, and that I'm mentally ill. You know, I agree with the judge on this part as far as mental illness goes that the majority of you frauditors do tend to have something wrong with your head. I mean, why else would you be going out harassing people? In fact, I'll give you two more examples of uh, frauditors who tend to have something wrong with their heads. And I can name many more. Uh, let's see, Glenn Serio and Regan Benson, the Banshee and the Dumbass. I wonder what would happen if those two had children. Oh my goodness, the horrors that would be set loose on this world. In one year, I got taken down to two charges, which was the disorderly conduct and trespassing. And the judge charged me on both counts. Now I have six months probation. I'm 46 years old. I haven't gotten in. I have 12 years sober from heroin this, ye uh, this month on October 29th. 12 years sober. None of this shit mattered to her. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. You're 12 years sober from heroin. But that doesn't negate anything when it comes to personal responsibility. And that's exactly what you're trying to uh, throw out the window, is your own personal responsibility for your own actions. Maybe you should... Uh, Take a look and see if uh, any abilities to educate yourself and learn from your mistakes have been hindered by uh, your previous drug addiction. Because, yeah, it seems like that uh, your uh, your ability to understand that kind of thing has been damaged by all the years of your drug abuse. I'm on probation now for six months. Guess what's a part of it? No auditing. I've also been banned from the Ben Salem Penda. I can never go back there again in my life. Even though I was arrested on the public sidewalk, 
out in front. Here, let me turn the light on so you can see my face and you're not. Okay. I'm like all out of sorts. Um, I look like shit. When you started this video, you said you had just gotten back. I hope you didn't go looking like that. I mean, dressed like that, I'm sure. Yeah, a judge would take you very seriously on that front. So, um, the judge repeatedly called me mentally ill. <laughs> and then I said, well, yeah, I'm in mental health treatment because I'm bipolar. And she looked at the judge, uh, she looked at the prosecutor, and she looked at the cop that arrested me and said, see? <laughs> and laughed because I'm mentally ill for auditing. <laughs> She said, I have a stupid little channel on YouTube that means nothing, and that I, I created a, uh, like a, a, almost like a terroristic, uh, this like crazy ass, I don't even know. I created this huge situation, even though I'm not the one who refused service to everyone and shut PennDOT down. Again. Personal responsibility here. You were the one that decided to violate everybody's privacy in the DMV. So therefore, in order to prevent that from happening, they shut it down in accordance to their policies to prevent any information that they didn't want to get out, such as confidential information of their customers, to get out to the public. Does that not compute to you, you nitwit? Like, do you know how much it was financially draining to have a lawyer who lives five and a half hours away drive here for, this was, I believe, the eighth, like, hearing out of continuations and out of all that and getting, like, reprocessed and, like, a million different things happening. And So you're telling us that... You couldn't find a lawyer that was any closer than six hours away. Kind of makes you wonder if uh, all the other lawyers realized that this would be a losing battle and decided not to even deal with you whatsoever. You know, now that it sounds like that kind of thing. I don't know. I thought that my lawyer would get me out of this or that the judge would actually believe in the law and the Constitution. And that law enforcement enforce, you know, the law. But I guess that was my bad, huh? You suck! Magically, the judge dropped the jury trial to take my cases down to summary offenses so that with summary offenses, you don't get a jury. Because if I had a jury in there today, things would have gone, the, the judge wouldn't have called me mentally ill. She wouldn't have laughed back and forth with the prosecution and with the cop that arrested me. But have you never gone through any uh, court cases online like any of us have where we see hours and hours of courtroom footage and uh, a lot of times you see prosecutors, judges, and defense attorneys laughing at each other's jokes? You never saw that before? Oh my goodness, you're a dull little lady. Like, is it even worth appealing? Like, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I really thought, like, this would be my comeback to auditing. Because I was really good at it. Your intellect is as weak as your dollar. Learn your rights, first of all. Well, honey, I audited for five months straight. And I thought I understood our rights. I thought our constitutional rights were the law. But apparently the Constitution is dead. No, the Constitution is not dead. You never understood it to begin with. The Constitution is a jumping off point to create laws for our country. Didn't you read the entire Constitution, especially the Tenth Amendment that grants the states the right to create laws that are not covered in the Constitution? Not to mention that... Uh, 
the Constitution also has the seven articles, which uh, well set up the form of government that we have that give us the ability to create these laws. So your inability to understand the nuances of the Constitution or the law is not an argument against it. The, the, the judge said, I raised my voice to the officer. She said, you do not speak to a state trooper that way. You do not talk down to him. You do not give him no respect. That's not how you talk to an officer. Well, that's how I talk to a pig. Oh, and she knew that this officer drove my car. And not, it wasn't parked in Penda. It was parked in front of a marijuana dispensary next to Penda, like, like 10 stores down. Right? And, and she said, what? This officer drove your car from Penda to the police station as a favor to you? And you're upset about it because he had no warrant? So you're upset that the so-called tyrants did you a favor by, what, moving your car out of the parking lot of a marijuana dispensary? That way it's not on private property and subject to tow at the whim of the uh, an owner of the dispensary? Are you that blooming stupid? I mean, come on now, you dumbass. That officer did you a huge favor. So just take it as it is, a favor that the officer tried to help you out rather than being a complete and total tyrant as you frauditors like to say they are. This just goes to prove that they are not the absolute tyrants that you claim that they are. Well, I'm just going to end the video right here, folks, because this was just an exercise of flat-out stupidity from uh, this woman. I mean, come on now. I have never seen a video of, well, I've got a massive persecution complex kind of thing. I mean, you need to put your victim card away and, uh, well, put on the big girl panties and, well, accept responsibility for your actions, you little nitwit. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. This could be some groundbreaking stuff right here. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Blue Serio? Who's that?